Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for sharing a part of your weekend with us. Starting off with a live look outside. We've got the blue skies and a really mild, beautiful morning before we get close to 90 degrees again today. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Anusha Roy. We're going to head right over to Corey Reppenhagen. Corey, I'm literally just hanging on until next weekend when it cools down. I know I'm not the only one. I'm over it. It's been so hot for so long. <laughs> exactly. I'm right there with you. And, you know, one good way to look at it is that it could be the final uh, close to 90 degree days uh, for another eight months. Oh, okay. So... At least we have that. That makes that, me feel right? better. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me take a look at your weather impact headlines that we are tracking. A sunny Saturday, so highs near 90 today. The record high temperature in Denver is 92. So we are in record territory as we go through the day. Uh, I don't think it's going to make it to 92, but 90 is possible. We're tracking Sunday storms, so some isolated storms will develop on the front range tomorrow, and that could impact your Broncos Sunday, but only 25% coverage, not a lot uh, of actual rain in these things. So, and also, would the real fall please stand up? We've had <laughs> one, two, maybe three teasers of just one day glimpses of fall, but we're tracking a cold front that's coming up in the middle of next week that should drop your temperatures down into those real nice fall conditions for a good five or six days. That starts in the middle of, ne of next week and goes through the weekend. All right, thanks so much for that. See you, Rep. Looking forward to it. An Aurora paramedic convicted in the death of Elijah McLean is out of prison. A judge on Friday converted Peter Chikuniak's five-year prison sentence to probation. It was the same judge who sentenced Chikuniak back in March. The defense pointing to his lack of criminal history and strong community ties. After serving a few months of his five-year prison sentence for the death of Elijah McLean, that decision came down from a judge on Friday deciding that Peter Chikuniak will not be spending another day behind bars. This case was handled by the the Attorney General Phil Weiser's office, who said that they are disappointed the court re reduced his sentence, but respect the decision. Here's what our legal analyst Scott Robinson is saying about it. It might not pe meet public expectations, but it actually comes as no surprise to me. Uh, the same statute that requires a five-year minimum mandatory sentence for second-degree assault has a bit of an escape clause for the court. McLean's mother says that she is not surprised. In a statement to Nine News, she said that she expected leniency. Prosecutors said that this type of modification has only been used 22 times since the law was passed 50 years ago, arguing that lowering Chikuniak's sentence would undermine the jury's verdict. Now, neither Chikuniak or the other paramedic, Jeremy Cooper, will do prison time after being found guilty for giving a lethal dose of ketamine to McLean. Cooper was sentenced to 14 months of work release and probation. The DOC said that Chikuniak's release was initiated yesterday. Broomfield police have identified the man behind an active shooter situation at the Arista Flats apartments earlier this week. Police say Gregory Miles is still in the hospital. That situation became intense so fast, with police saying that he got into a shootout with police, shot at other apartments, and then in the parking lot as well. This was off of Highway 36 in Wadsworth. The 34-year-old was hit several times. Police say Miles also took a woman hostage and killed her. Police have not identified the victim. They also haven't explained the relationship relationship between her and Miles. He is now facing a murder charge. Right now, the Walden County Sheriff's Office is asking for the public's help to find a missing woman. She's 42-year-old Amber Dawn Williams, last seen after being released from the Weld County Jail back in March. Detectives don't know which direction she may have traveled in or if she left on foot or in a car. They do believe she may be in Estes Park or Greeley. Amber has blonde hair, brown eyes. She is five feet tall. If you know where she is, you are asked to contact police. Court documents say the guy who fled from police and then crashed a truck onto CU Boulder's Folsom Field caused more than $100,000 worth of damage. Court records show it all started around 6.45 Thursday night when police say the man hit another car in his truck and then drove away. Witnesses were trying to stop him. He kept going. Records show that he hit a second car, a street sign, a tree, almost hit people walking by. Police backed off on their chase for safety until campus police spotted him.
And honestly, anytime somebody drives to a big landmark like that, we have concerns, uh, you know, what are the, what's their intention? And so before we even uh, dealt with the car, we had uh, to make sure there wasn't explosives. That was, those are all things that were going through our minds of why is this guy coming here specifically? Is there more to this? And so um, they negotiated for a few minutes and were able to take him into custody. Court records say the driver was having a manic episode and was yelling incoherently right before he was arrested. He is now facing multiple charges, including vehicular assault. That chase ended up on the 40-yard line at Folsom Field. Repairs are expected for this weekend. The Buffs are in Fort Collins this weekend anyway for the Rocky Mountain Showdown. They'll be back at Folsom September 21st. The city of Denver announced Friday that two remaining short-term shelters for migrants are now being converted into cold weather shelter as the season is changing. And as migration also from the southern border is majorly slowing down into Denver. Previously, Denver had opened cold weather shelters only overnight and only when temperatures drop below 20 degrees. Under the new plan, shelters will be open 24 hours anytime it drops below 25 degrees. People can lose fingers, toes. We're talking life-threatening cold at times. Anything you could do to convince someone to come inside, you got to do it. The city says they'll start converting those two sites into cold weather shelters over the next couple of weeks. The city says on that same timetable, they'll stop paying for migrants' bus tickets onto other cities. Tens of thousands of workers are walking off the job this weekend after overwhelmingly rejecting a new contract with Boeing. More than 30,000 workers walked off the job. Assembly line production in the Northwest is expected to slow to a standstill after nearly 95% of union members voted to reject Boeing's latest offer. Workers say that there haven't been an increase in wages since 2016 and the cost of living is going up. Boeing's offer includes a 25% pay hike over four years but without yearly bonuses. Workers lost their pensions back in 2014, and now the union wants a 40% pay hike. After agreeing to his own $39 million pay package, the new CEO is urging union members to take Boeing's offer, but the union has said no. This is about respect. This is about addressing the past, and this is about fighting for our future. The strike comes as Boeing space is also losing money. NASA did not trust Boeing Starliner spacecraft to bring two astronauts home from the space station, so the Starliner left the station without them last week. Astronauts Suni Williams and Bush Wilmore will be coming home next February on a SpaceX ship. This is the latest blow for Boeing. The company's stock down 35% this year. January's tour blood blowout and federal investigation found a breakdown in Boeing's quality control. Top executives were out, and in July, the company ended up pleading guilty to a federal charge tied to two fatal MAX 8 crashes that happened overseas. This week, a woman who was held hostage by Hamas came to Denver to talk about her experience. She had spent weeks in captivity. Moran Yanai was abducted by Hamas terrorists on October 7th. This was during the Nova Music Festival in Israel. She is one of the first hostages to speak publicly about her experience and is the first to speak here in Colorado. She described her experience to around 200 people at a congregation in Denver Wednesday night, saying that she was beaten over 54 days. Yanai says that she is now committed to doing everything she can to bring home the remaining hostages. I got a mission. I have an obligation. I promise. I promise to all the hostages that I'll do everything in my power. You have a responsibility as well, each and every one of you. You need to choose what world you want to inherit to your own children. About 100 people are still being held hostage in Gaza. A third of them are believed to be dead. Ukraine is now pushing for permission from its Western partners to use a long-range missile that they have provided to strike targets deeper inside Russia. Kiev officials are arguing the weapons are vital to weaken Russia's ability to strike Ukraine and force it to move its strike capabilities further from the border. Russia, however, has warned that it would consider allowing such long-range strikes an act of war and that Ukraine's Western allies are wary of antagonizing the country with the world's largest nuclear arsenal. Ukraine is ramping up its own domestic program to develop long-range weapons, including drones that are already capable of hitting targets deep inside Russian territory. The Western missiles, however, would offer greater precision and a far bigger destructive capacity.